Pronunciation pairs. An introduction to the sounds of English, second edition, by Ann Baker and Sharon Goldstein. Published by Cambridge University Press. This recording is in copyright. This student audio program contains listening material for some of the exercises in pronunciation pairs, second edition. It does not contain all the material in the class audio program. Unit 1 B. Dialogue Eating Out. What are you getting to eat, Lee? The meat pizza and Greek salad. And a cup of coffee. Me too. Are you getting the meat pizza too, Steve? No, the cheese pizza. I don't eat meat. Really? Good evening. Are you ready to order? Let's see. We'd like two meat pizzas and one cheese pizza. Bean soup or Greek salad to start? Greek, Greek salad. salad. And would you like coffee or tea? Three coffees, please. Make that two coffees. Tea for me, please. Three Greek salads, two meat pizzas, one cheese pizza, two coffees, one tea. Unit 2. D. Dialogue. An interesting film. Hello, Cindy. Hi, Mrs. Kim. Is William in? Is he coming with me to the film? I picked up a ticket for him. Oh, William's sick. Here he is. Hi, William. Are you sick? What film is it? Anything interesting? It's King Kong, and it begins in 15 minutes. 50 minutes? Come in and sit down. Not 50 minutes, 15. Listen, William. If you're sick, I don't think... Quick, or we'll miss the beginning of the film. Unit 3. D. Dialogue. The best vacation ever. Hello, Ben. Hi, Jenny. Welcome back. Thanks. Where did you spend your vacation? I went to Venice with a friend. Venice? I'm jealous. Tell me everything. When did you get back? Yesterday. How was the weather? Wet. Was it expensive? Yes, very, especially the hotel. How were the restaurants? They were excellent, but expensive. I spent every cent I had. So, the weather was wet, everything was very expensive, and you don't have any money left. It sounds terrible. No, it was the best vacation ever. Unit 4, D. Dialogue. At the train station. Hey, this train is late. I've been waiting here for ages. Which train are you waiting for? The 818 to Great Plains. The 818? I'm afraid you've made a mistake, sir. A mistake? I take this train every day. The train to Great Plains leaves at 8.08. At 8.08? Where does it say that? Right here. Train to Great Plains, 8.08. They changed the schedule. They changed it? Uh, I guess they changed it while I was away on vacation. They changed the schedule at the end of April, sir. Today is the 8th of May. Hmm. So, the train isn't late. I'm late. Unit 5, D. Dialogue. The Bank Robber. Excuse me, ma'am. Do you recognize any of the men in this photograph? Yes, that one. That's him. That's the man who robbed the bank. The man with the black pants? Yes. But he had a mustache. A mustache? This man? Last Saturday? Yes. And he was wearing a jacket. A black jacket? No, a plaid jacket. Red plaid. Can you tell me exactly what happened? Well, I was working at the bank on Saturday afternoon. Suddenly, this man ran past me, 
grabbed a handful of cash and stuffed it in a bag. What kind of bag? A plastic bag. And what happened after that? He ran back out again. It all happened so fast. And you're absolutely sure the man in this photograph is the same man? Yes, absolutely. That's him. Thank you for your help. I hope you catch him. Unit 6. C. Dialogue. Dinner on the grass. Do you need help with dinner? No, thanks. Everything's ready. Great. Are we having chicken? No, I made steak. Any vegetables? Yes, lettuce and tomato salad. Did you pick up some bread at the bakery? Yes, and lemon cheesecake. Lemon cheesecake. That sounds interesting. I tasted it. It's delicious. <laughs> Let's eat in the backyard, okay? Good idea. It's really pretty this evening. Can you get plates and napkins? Okay, I'll be back in a minute. Should we sit on this seat? Let's sit on this blanket on the grass. Mmm, it smells delicious. I can't wait to eat. Uh-oh, did you feel that? I think it's beginning to rain. <sighs> it figures. Can you help me bring everything back in? Unit 7. D. Dialogue. Who does she love? Why are you so unhappy? Honey, why are you so sad? You don't love me, Jasmine. But, Russell, I don't understand. I love you very much. No, you don't. You're in love with my cousin. Justin? No, my other cousin. Duncan? Don't be funny. He's much too young. I'm talking about his brother. You mean Hunter? That's nuts. And Hunter loves you, too. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. Russell, just once last month I had lunch with Hunter. There's nothing for you to be jealous about. You think he's fun to be with, and I'm just dull. But, honey, I like your company much better than Hunter's. I think you're wonderful. You do? Unit 9, D. Dialogue. Asking a favor. See you later. Where are you going? To the doctor. Can you get something for me at the supermarket on your way home? Okay. What do you want me to get? I need some bread. Do you want white bread or whole wheat? Whole wheat. And can you get a couple of cans of tuna fish? Do you want tuna packed in oil? Or water? Water. Oh, and a jar of peanut butter and a container of vanilla yogurt. Hey, that's a lot of stuff. And one more thing, a pint of ice cream. What flavor do you want? What flavor do you like? Me? Yes, the ice cream is for you, to thank you for stopping at the supermarket. Unit 10 E. Dialogue. A TV commercial. What's the problem, John? It's this holiday shopping. I'm ready to drop. Just stop. Don't shop till you drop. Park your car in your garage, turn on the non-stop shopping channel, and start shopping the modern way. Whether you're looking for a watch for your father, a laptop for your mother, a guitar for your brother, or a box of chocolates for your sweetheart, We've got what you want. The best products at bargain prices. We'll show you what's hot and what's not. Do you have a lot of gifts to buy? It's not a hard job with the shopping channel. Or shop online at our popular website. Just log on to www.nonstopshopping.com. Unit 11E. Dialogue. Sports Report on Channel 4. This morning, the Hawks returned from their game in New York. Laura Morgan, our sports reporter, was at the airport to meet them. Good morning. I'm Laura Morgan. 
All the football players are walking toward me. Here's George Small, the halfback. Good morning, George. Good morning. Are you a reporter? Yes, I'm from Channel 4. Can you tell our audience what you thought about the game in New York? It was awful. We lost. The score was 4 to 44. Really? I thought the score was 4 to 34. No, 4 to 44. But it wasn't my fault. Whose fault was it? The quarterbacks. The quarterbacks? Yes, the quarterbacks. He was always falling or dropping the ball. Unit 12, D. Dialogue. Snow. Joe. 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 Hello. Uh, oh, no. What's the problem? Look out the window. No. My eyes are closed and I'm going back to sleep. Don't go to sleep now, Joe. Come look at the snow. Snow? It's only October. I know there's no snow. Leave me alone. Come over to the window. Stop joking, Joan. There's no snow. Okay, I'll show you. I'm going to put on my coat and go out and make a snowball and throw it at you. Then you'll open your eyes. Unit 13, B. Dialogue. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. This is Lou. He's from Peru. Nice to meet you, Lou. What's new? Just the usual. What's new with you? Do you like this music? Yes. Do you like it? Let me introduce you to my roommate, Sue. Is she a student, too? What do you do? I work with computers. What about you? What do you do? I like your blue shoes. Thank you. They're new. Are you doing anything on Tuesday? No. Are you? Do you want to see a movie? Excuse me. I want to get some food. I have to leave soon. Me too. Nice to meet you, Sue. Nice to meet you, too. See you on Tuesday, Lou. Happy New Year. Happy New Year! Unit 14, D. Dialogue. Looking for a book. Luke, could you help me look for my book? I'm not sure where I put it. Which book? My new cookbook, Good Cooking. Should I look in the bookcase? No, the bookcase is full. It wouldn't be there. Maybe you should look in the living room. I looked everywhere, even under the cushions. Couldn't you use another cookbook? No, the cookbook I'm looking for is a sugar-free, fat-free... Food-free cookbook? <laughs> Very funny. You eat too much junk food. It isn't good for you. But it tastes good. Well, you shouldn't eat so much sugar. Hmm, I think you took that book and put it somewhere so I couldn't use it. I didn't put it anywhere. I think you should look under that box of cookies. Oops. Unit 15, C. Dialogue, Paul's new apartment. So, this is your new apartment? Yes, my own apartment. Isn't it wonderful? It's, uh, it has a lovely view. I know the rooms are small, but... We can move a few things, and the room will look much larger. But... You know, the sofa should always be opposite the window. Oh, the sofa is too hard to move. Nonsense. I'll push, and you pull. Ugh. Now let's move the bookcase to the other wall. But the bookcase is full of books. Oh, no problem. We'll just put them on the floor. Um, okay. Whew. 
That's done. And that photo, it doesn't look good over the blue sofa. It doesn't? What should I do with it? Why don't you put it on top of the bookcase? Ah, that's much better. What's wrong? Don't you think it looks good? Oh, beautiful. But I thought the room looked good before we moved everything. Unit 16, D. Dialogue. Exercise or ice cream? Hi, Mike. How are you? Oh, hi, Liza. I'm fine, thanks. Mike, do you like hiking? Sometimes. Why? I'm going hiking later. Would you like to come? Maybe some other time. I have 19 emails to write by 5 o'clock. Would you like to go ice skating tonight? I've never tried ice skating. Why not try it tonight? Not tonight, Liza. I'm driving Ryan to the eye doctor. Well, how about bike riding? I'm going bike riding on Friday. I can't. My bike needs new tires. Oh, all right. I'm going out to buy ice cream. Bye. Oh, ice cream. I like ice cream. Would you like to come? Would you mind? Unit 17. D. Dialogue. Noise. <laughs> Boys, stop that noise. What? Keep your voices down. You're making too much noise. Why are you so annoyed, Roy? They're just enjoying themselves. But the noise is very annoying. They're little boys. Of course they'll make noise. I'm sure I wasn't that noisy when I was a little boy. <laughs> boys! <laughs> they don't listen. They're spoiled. They destroy all the toys I buy them. And they're the noisiest boys I've ever heard. Well, maybe you shouldn't buy them such noisy toys. It's not the toys that are noisy. It's the boys. Unit 18, D. Dialogue. A mouse in the house. There's a mouse in the house. Ow, not so loud. Calm down. Please stop shouting and sit down. I found a mouse. A mouse? Yes, I was lying down on the couch and I heard a sound. It was probably something outside. Or maybe the shower. I was taking a shower. No, I saw the mouse. It was a little brown mouse, and it was running around. Where is it now? It's under the couch. Well, let's get it out. How? Move the couch around. T turn it upside down. We have to get it out somehow. We can't have a mouse in the house. We have company coming from out of town. They'll be here in an hour. Calm down, Howard. Please stop shouting and sit down. It's just a little brown mouse. Unit 19, C. Dialogue. A boy lying down. How are you doing with your painting? All right. Is that a boy? Yes, I'm trying to paint a boy lying down. Is the boy on the ground? Yes, he's lying on the ground looking up at the sky. Hmm, now I see. Why don't you try using oil paints? I've never tried painting with oils. It sounds hard. You should buy some oil paints and try it. You might enjoy it. I guess you don't like my painting. It's nice, but why is there a big brown cloud behind the boy? It isn't a cloud. It's a mountain. Unit 20, D. Reading. A Dream Vacation. Maria spent Saturday afternoon looking at a beautiful book about South America. I'd love to go to South America, she said to herself. The next morning, Maria woke up at six o'clock. Her brother and sister were still asleep. Maria looked at them and closed her eyes again. Then she quietly got out of bed and began to pack a suitcase. She packed some comfortable clothes, a pair of binoculars, and her sister's camera. She remembered to take a hat for the sun. 
She also decided to pack a photograph of herself and a picture of her mother and father. I'd better not forget to have some breakfast, she said to herself. But then she looked at the clock. It was a quarter to seven. I don't want to be late, she said. I'll just have a glass of water now. A glass of water, she said softly. Water, she said, and opened her eyes. She was still in bed, and her brother and sister were laughing at her. Tell us what you were dreaming about, they said to her. But Maria didn't answer. She was thinking about her wonderful trip to South America. Unit 21, F. Dialogue, The Worst Nurse. Nurse, nurse, I'm thirsty. Nurse, my head hurts. Pearl is the worst nurse, isn't she? Personally, I think Kurt is worse. Hmm, he always leaves work early. And he always wears a dirty shirt. I heard he earns $30 an hour. He certainly doesn't deserve it. He and Pearl weren't at work on Thursday, were they? They're the worst nurses on the floor, aren't they? No, they're the worst nurses in the world. Unit 22, B. Dialogue. Passports, please. Passports, please. Peter, aren't the passports in your pocket? I thought you put them in your purse, Pam. No. I have a pen, a postcard, a map, a spoon, and some pictures. Check your pocket. I have a pencil, some stamps, an envelope, some pennies. Please stop taking everything out of your pocket. You probably put them in the plastic bag. Here's a cup, an apple, a paper plate, some presents, a newspaper. Peter, stop pulling everything out of the plastic bag. People are getting impatient. Please help me. Help put the things back in the plastic bag. We have a problem. We can't find our passports. Let the other passengers pass, please. It's possible we dropped them on the plane. Please go upstairs with this police officer. Unit 23, D. Dialogue. Happy birthday. Hi, Barbara. You look happy. Well, you know, today's my birthday. Oh, right, October 7th, your birthday. Happy birthday. Thanks, Bob. Look at this bracelet Abby gave me. I can't believe she made it. Yeah, those blue beads are beautiful. Is that a new backpack? Was that a birthday present too? The backpack? No, I bought it myself. What did your parents give you for your birthday? A set of paintbrushes. And my mom baked a birthday cake. What about your brother? Did he give you anything? Yes, he built a bookshelf for my bedroom. And uh, somebody gave me a cookbook. I'm really sorry, Barbara, but I totally forgot about your birthday. I've been so busy with my job. Well, my birthday isn't over yet. Right. Let's go out and celebrate. How about taking a cab to that new club? Unit 24, B. Dialogue. At the Visitor Center. Could you tell me how to get to the train station? The train station? Turn right when you leave the Visitor Center. When you get to the light, turn left onto First Avenue. The train station will be on your right. You can't miss it. Are there any Thai restaurants around here? Thai restaurants? There's a great Thai restaurant on Water Street. It's called Taste of Thailand. Go two blocks to the right and then left onto Water Street.
Where can I get a taxi? Try the taxi stand on First Avenue. Just go to the right and turn left at the light. It's just past the train station. How do I get to the City Lights Hotel? Go two blocks to the right and turn left on Water Street. Then turn left again when you get to Liberty Street. You'll see a tall white building. That's it. I'm trying to get to the Times Tower. Well, you can take the number 12 bus. It stops right outside the visitor center and get off at 14th Street. But it might be better to walk. There's a lot of traffic this time of day. Where can I get stamps for these letters? Your best bet is the post office. When you go out of here, turn that way. Go two blocks. Then turn left onto Taylor Street. It'll be on your right. Do you know what time it is? It's exactly 22 minutes after 10. Unit 25D. Dialogue. A missed date. Hello? Hello, Diana. This is David. Oh, hi, David. What happened yesterday? I waited and waited for you. You forgot our date, didn't you? No, I remembered. But it rained all day, and I had a bad cold, so I decided to stay home. You did? But I tried to call you at least 20 times, and nobody answered. Oh, the phone lines were damaged by the storm. They repaired them today. Oh, and what did your sister Maddie do yesterday? Did she and her boyfriend go dancing? No, they didn't. They stayed home and played cards. And what did you do? Did you play cards too? No, I studied and listened to CDs. And after dinner, I watched a DVD with Maddie. What did you do for dinner? I didn't feel like making a big dinner, so I just heated up some frozen food. What did you do yesterday, David? I just told you, Diana. I tried to call you 20 times. Unit 26B. Dialogue. Junk or keepsakes? Yikes! Look at all this junk. What's in that box? Can you check? Just a second. Cool! My old comic books. Okay, they can go in recycling. Recycling? No, I can sell them. People collect old comic books. Can you take a look at that rocking chair? It looks like the back is broken. I can fix it, I think. We could use an extra... Excuse me, what's that next to the bookcase? Is that a clock? It's a cuckoo clock. I got it in Canada. Can I ask you a question? Why are you keeping a plastic cuckoo clock? It isn't plastic. It's oak. Actually, it was kind of expensive. Does it work? It's exactly 6 o'clock now, and it's very quiet. Of course it works. Here, let me connect it. It's electric. It would be perfect for the kitchen, don't you think? Are you kidding? Listen to that while I cook? I'd go crazy. Hey, where are you taking all that junk? Bring it back to the attic. Junk? You call this junk? These are keepsakes. Unit 27D. Dialogue. Guests in August. Guess who's coming to Chicago? Maggie and Greg? How'd you guess? I just got a message from Greg. Great. When are they going to be in Chicago? The beginning of August. I'm glad they're coming in August. Maybe we can get tickets to a baseball game. Good idea. And Greg and I can play some golf. Maggie and I can take the dog and go jogging in the park. If the weather's good, maybe we can go swimming in Lake Michigan. And They're not going to be here that long. After Chicago, they're going to Canada. 
Where in Canada are they going? I don't know exactly. They're going to go camping. Remember the big party they gave when we were in England? How could I forget? Maggie played the guitar with that group. And we all sat on the grass and sang songs. I had a great time. It'll be good to get together again. Unit 29, B. Dialogue. It's expensive. Let's go to the seashore on Saturday. Yes, excellent. Would you rather go sailing or water skiing? Water skiing is so exciting. It's also expensive, Stacy. Let's just sit in the sun and go swimming instead. Let's stay over Saturday night and spend Sunday there, too. We could stay at the Six Star Hotel. Be sensible, sweetie. It's too expensive. Let's sleep outside instead. Yes, let's sleep on the sand. That's more exciting. Unit 30, D. Dialogue. Surprises in the post office. This box smells funny, Liz. There's something written on it. What does it say? It says, this contains six mice. Yikes! Listen, what's in this sack? It's making a strange hissing sound. Zoe, it sounds like snakes. Oh, it does. I wonder what's in this case, Liz. It's making a buzzing noise. <laughs> These are bees. A box of mice and a sack of snakes and a case of bees. This is very surprising. It's amazing. This isn't a post office, Liz. It's a zoo. Unit 31, D. Dialogue, a special washing machine. Do you sell washing machines? Yes, we're having a special sale on this washing machine here. Could you give me some information about it? Was it made in Denmark? The name looks Danish. No, it's from Sweden. It's a Swedish machine. Would you like a demonstration? Sure, I'd like to see how it washes. It's very simple to operate. I'll demonstrate. Here are some sheets and shirts. You put them in the machine, add soap, and shut the door. Then you just push this button. The machine shouldn't shake like that, should it? Washing machines always shake. Ah, it's finished. But the sheets have shrunk. And look at how short these shirts are. Oh, those are English sheets. English sheets always shrink a little. And those shirts were short before we washed them. Well, I'm not sure. Could you show me another washing machine? Certainly. But this is the only machine we have at the special sale price. We also have this dishwasher on sale. Would you like a demonstration? Unit 32 B. Announcement. Television tonight on the Leisure Channel. Coming up next on the Leisure Channel, the talk show, It's a Pleasure. Tonight's special guest is the author of Decisions, Decisions, the book that shows you how to make the best choices. Then stay tuned for What's the Occasion at 6.30. Planning a party? What's the Occasion will show you how to make any occasion special. At 7 o'clock, be sure to watch the classic movie Treasure Island for action, adventure, and, of course, treasure. On the 9 o'clock news, find out about an unusual collision and other top news stories. At 9.30, Casual Chic will feature some special clothes for casual occasions. And at 10 o'clock, Trash to Treasure will show you how to make old furniture look fresh and new. If you have trouble finding space in your garage for your car, don't miss Measure Twice at 10.30. This week's project, 
organizing the garage. At 11 o'clock, join Destination Asia for a leisurely trip to Malaysia and Indonesia. But don't go to sleep yet. Our midnight movie tonight is Invasion of the Martians. And now, here's the news. Unit 33, D. Dialogue. Cooking Show. Hello, everyone. You're watching Lunch with a Chef. Today, Rachel Richard, the chef at Artichoke Cafe, will be making lunch in our kitchen. Welcome, Rachel. Thank you, Charles. For lunch today, Rachel will make three dishes from her restaurant, Artichoke Cafe. Rachel, tell us about the dishes you've chosen for the show. Well, Charles, I'll be making spinach and artichoke dip, stuffed artichokes, and chicken with... Artichokes? Naturally. I guess artichokes are your favorite food? Actually, my favorite food is chocolate, but artichokes are my favorite vegetable. So, Rachel, which dish will you start with? The spinach and artichoke dip. What goes into that, besides spinach and artichokes, of course? What makes your dip so rich and creamy? Well, I use a mixture of cream cheese and cheddar cheese. Interesting. Anything else? Yes, some chili pepper, either a fresh chili or chili powder. How much chili powder? Oh, not too much chili powder, just a pinch. Mmm, it sounds delicious. We'll be back after these commercials with two more special dishes from Artichoke Cafe. Unit 34, D. Dialogue. Did you get the job? Did you call about the job? Which job? The job managing the travel agency. Oh, that job. Yes, I did. What did you find out? They want someone who graduated from college. Well, you just graduated in June. They're looking for someone who majored in business management. Didn't you major in management before you changed your major to psychology? Actually, I didn't change majors. I had a double major. I majored in management and psychology. If you get the job, would you arrange travel for individuals, or would you just do group tour packages? Oh, I'd make all kinds of travel arrangements. They want someone who's energetic and enjoys challenges. Anyone who majors in two subjects enjoys a challenge. And they want someone with a knowledge of foreign languages. You speak Japanese, don't you? Yes, and a little German. So, did you arrange for an interview? Yes, for July 6th. July 6th? Are you joking? That was yesterday. I'm not joking. I had the interview, and I got the job. Hey, congratulations. Why didn't you tell me? Unit 35, C. Thoughts. Saturday Decisions. Is it 7 o'clock already? I'm so sleepy. Should I go to the gym, or should I be lazy and stay home? Should I go swimming as usual, or use the exercise machines for a change? Let's see, what should I have for lunch? A chicken sandwich? or a cheese sandwich? Should I go shopping or do some chores around the house? I guess I'll buy some fish for dinner. Hmm, should I get salmon or shrimp? Which is easier? Should I pay with cash or a check? I usually pay with cash, but I'm not sure I have enough. Mmm, the shrimp smell delicious. Should I cook a vegetable or just have a salad? Should I wash the dishes now or watch the news on television? Time for Jess's party. She said it was casual, but should I change into a skirt or just wear jeans? Saturday, so many decisions. Unit 36, D. Dialogue. A music student. Excuse me, 
You look familiar. Did you used to live in New York? Yes. Did you used to work at NYU? Yes, I taught music there for a few years. Did you know Hugo Young? He was a music student. Hugo Young. Did he used to drive a yellow Jeep? Yes, he did. And he used to play the piano with a jazz group at the university. Oh, yeah. I remember Hugo. A lot of people thought he was a little, uh, peculiar. Do you know what he's doing now? Yes, he lives in California, and he's a millionaire. A millionaire? As a jazz musician? Oh, no. He's an executive with a huge computer company. I just saw an interview with him on TV yesterday. They were asking his opinion about future uses for computers. Well, I guess people don't find him peculiar anymore. Unit 37, D. Dialogue, Family Photo. I'd like a photo of myself and my family. Fill out this form, please. What size photographs would you prefer, 4x6 or 5x7? If there isn't a big difference in price, I'd prefer the 5x7. We're offering a special this week. If you pay for four photos, you get the fifth one free. Sounds fine. Sophie stepped on my foot. Ugh, Frankie stepped on my foot first. Ugh. Stop fighting. Can the four of you sit on this sofa, please? Ugh, I, I can't fit. Frankie's taking up the whole sofa. I am not. Your head is in front of my face. Ugh. That's enough. If you two don't stop fighting, we'll never get finished. Are you comfortable now? Mr. and Mrs. Freeman, try to laugh. That's difficult. If you say something funny, I'll laugh. Frankie and Sophie look cheerful and friendly. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Will the photographs be ready by February 1st? Definitely. If you don't hear from us by Friday, phone my office. Unit 38, E. Dialogue. A view of the valley. How long have you lived here? Five and a half years. We moved here on November 1st. You have a fantastic view. Thanks. Look, Vivian, you can see the river down in the valley. It's a beautiful view. I've traveled all over, and this is one of my very favorite places. Yes, I love living here. And I love visiting. Unit 39. D. Dialogue. A walk in the woods. What's happening with William? Did you see him this week? Yeah, I saw him on Wednesday. We went for a walk. What did you do? I said we went for a walk. Where did you walk? In the woods. Where? In the woods. You know, the woods near the highway. Wasn't it cold and wet on Wednesday? Well, it was cold and very windy, but not wet. I wore a heavy wool sweater, and we walked quickly to keep warm. I love walking in the woods. It's so peaceful and quiet. Yeah, it was very quiet once we got away from the highway. There were birds and squirrels everywhere. Wow, it sounds wonderful. Did you spend the whole day in the woods? No, William had to work in the afternoon. I went home around one. What did you do for lunch? We brought sandwiches with us. We stopped for lunch around 12, and we sat and watched the squirrels for a while, but it was too windy to sit long. Well, it sounds like a very nice walk anyway. It was. Unit 40, D. Dialogue. A horrible accident. Hi, Ellen. Oh, Helen. Have you heard about Henry? Who? Henry Harris, Hannah's husband. He was in a car accident. Oh, no. What happened? He had an accident on his way home from work. How awful. Was he hurt? Yeah. He was taken to the hospital in an ambulance. That's horrible. How did it happen? A vehicle hit him from behind. 
It happened about half a mile from his house. How horrible. Is he still in the hospital? Yeah. He's having an operation tomorrow. Poor Hannah. She's exhausted. She's been at the hospital for hours. Was the other driver hurt, too? No, he was completely unharmed. I hope Henry will be all right. I hope so, too. Unit 41E. E. Dialogue. Gossip. Kathy Roth is 33. Is she? I thought she was 43. Her birthday was last Thursday. Was it? I thought it was last month. Seth is her third husband. Is he? I thought he was her fourth husband. Their house is worth $300,000. Is it? I thought it was worth about $100,000. Seth is the author of a math book. Is he? I thought he was an athlete. I'm so thirsty. Are you? I thought you had something to drink at Kathy's house. No, Kathy didn't offer me anything. I'll buy you a drink. Oh, thank you. Unit 42E. E. Dialogue. The Jacket in the Window. I'd like to buy that jacket in the window. Well, there are three jackets together in the window. Do you want the one with the feather collar? No, the other one. The leather one. The one with the zipper? No, not that one either. That one over there. The one that's on sale. Oh, that one. Now, here's another leather jacket that I think you'd like. But this one is more expensive than the one in the window. It's a better jacket than the other one. The leather is smoother. I'd rather get the one in the window, though. I think that one is better for cold weather. Well, fine, if that's the one you want. But we don't take anything out of the window until 3 o'clock on Thursday. Unit 44B. Dialogue. Mom's Muffins. Mom? Mm hmm? Can my friend Tom come home with me for lunch tomorrow? Mm, I guess so. Have I met Tom before? Mm-hmm. You met him in the summer. He's small and really smart in math. Hmm. I remember Tom. His family comes from Maine, right? Mm-hmm. That's him. Oh, um, Mom, can you make some homemade muffins tomorrow? Mm, maybe. If I have time. But, Mom, I told Tom about your muffins. That's why he's coming for lunch tomorrow. Unit 45, D. Dialogue. At a rental agency. Good morning. I'm interested in renting a one-bedroom apartment downtown. Certainly. We have a nice apartment on the corner of Main Street and Central Avenue. It has big windows, a new kitchen, and a very convenient location. And it's only $1,120 a month. I couldn't pay $1,120 a month. I'm a student. A student, hmm. How much can you spend? Well, I didn't want to spend more than $700 a month. $700 a month? We don't often have apartments as inexpensive as that. Not in the center of town, anyway. We've got one apartment for $790 a month. Where is it? Is it in the same neighborhood? No, it isn't. It's on 7th Avenue near the train station. I don't know. I mean, I need to be near the university. It's on a bus line. It has a kitchen, but the kitchen doesn't have an oven. <laughs> no oven? Well, a nice kitchen isn't that important to me. There's a garden in the front, but the tenants can't use it. The landlord lives downstairs. Friends are forbidden in the apartment after midnight. No noise and no television after 11.15. No... No, thank you. I want an apartment, not a prison. Unit 46E. E. Dialogue. 
Noisy neighbors. Bang, bang, bang. What are the kings doing? It's seven o'clock on Sunday morning and we're trying to sleep. They're talking very loudly. Yes, but what's the banging noise, Ingrid? Ron is standing on a ladder and banging some nails into the wall with a hammer. Now he's tying some strong string on the nails. What's Anne doing? She's bringing something pink for Ron to drink. Now she's putting it down. He's reaching for the drink and, oh no. What's happening? The ladder is falling. Is Ron still standing on it? No, he's, he's hanging from the string. Oh my goodness. He's holding onto the string by his fingers and yelling. Isn't Anne helping him? No, she's running toward our house. You're joking. That's her ringing the bell. Well, I'm not answering it. I'm sleeping. Unit 47, E. Dialogue, Night Owl. Welcome to Solve Your Sleep Problems with Dr. Sleep. Dr. Sleep's real name is Luisa Lopez, and she'll be taking calls from listeners. Do you have trouble sleeping? Here's our first caller now. Hello, Luisa Lopez here. Who's calling, please? Hello, my name is Lily, and uh, I'm a college student. Hello, Lily. How well do you sleep? Not well at all. I have a lot of trouble falling asleep at night. And then in the morning, I need two alarm clocks to wake me. I have an English class at 8 o'clock, and I'm always late. When do you go to sleep, Lily? I usually go to bed around um, 11 o'clock. Maybe 11 o'clock is too early for you. We all have a biological clock that tells us when to sleep. Maybe your biological clock is telling you to go to bed later. Well, if I go to bed later, it still takes me a long time to fall asleep. How can I fall asleep more quickly? First of all, you should follow a regular schedule. Always go to sleep and get up at the same time. Don't sleep late on the weekend. All right, I'll try. And do something relaxing before bed. No loud music or lively telephone calls. I hardly ever listen to loud music, so that'll be simple. Use your bed only for sleeping, not for watching television or reading. Well, that'll be difficult because I always watch television in bed. And let's see what else. Turn all the lights off. Keep your bedroom cool but not cold. And last but not least, if you do have trouble falling asleep, don't look at the clock. My mom always tells me to drink a glass of milk. Does that really help? Yes, it does. Milk has a chemical that helps people sleep. A glass of milk is an excellent idea. All right, I'll try all that. And one last thing. Maybe you should listen to your biological clock and look for a later English class. Unit 48, D. Dialogue. Proud Parents. Are your children grown up now, Laura? Oh, yes. Rachel is married and has three children. You're a grandmother? That's great. Congratulations. Thanks. But I don't see my grandchildren very much. Rachel and her family live in Paris. In Paris? Really? Yeah. Rachel is a reporter for an American newspaper. Her husband is a French photographer. They met when they were reporting on the same story. How romantic. And what about Grace? Is she married too? She was such a bright girl, always reading. No, she isn't married, but she has a boyfriend. And she still reads a lot. She's a librarian at the public library. So what about your children? Do you remember Roger? Of course I remember Roger. Is he in college? 
Oh, no. He graduated. Right now, he's working as a translator. But what he really wants to do is write. That's not surprising. He was a very creative little boy, always drawing or writing stories. You're right. He'd like a job with more creativity. And what about Brian? He was more practical, if I remember correctly. Less of a dreamer. Brian is an air traffic controller in Florida. Really? Very interesting. Yeah, it's an interesting job, but stressful. Does his job require a lot of travel? Not really, but he has a lot of responsibility. I'm sorry, Laura. I have to run now. I'm late for my train, but I'm really glad I ran into you. Great to see you too, Rose. Give my regards to everybody. Unit 49D. Dialogue. At the airport. Good morning. Passengers on Park Airways Flight 434 scheduled to depart for New York at 1230. There will be a short delay. That flight will now depart at 445. Passengers should remain here at the airport. We're sorry for any inconvenience. Did you hear that? It wasn't very clear. There's going to be a short delay. We aren't leaving until a quarter to five. Short delay? That's more than four hours. Well, I'm thirsty. Do you know if there's a coffee bar here? I'm not sure. Oh, there's an airline clerk. Ask her. Pardon me. Is there a coffee bar here? A coffee bar? No, sorry. This isn't a very large airport. But there's a cafeteria upstairs, near the security check. Thanks. I'm going upstairs. Coming, dear? No, I'm tired. I'm going to find a comfortable chair and stay here. Where's the nearest restroom? Right over there, near gate 14. Is there a problem with the airplane? Oh, no, sir. There's a storm moving toward here, and the weather forecast says it will get worse before it gets better. But it should clear up in a couple of hours. Are you sure? Oh, yes, sir. Flight 434 will be the first plane to leave after the storm. Our departure time is 445. We'll start boarding at quarter after four. This is the end of the audio program. Thank you for listening.